And so on this 32nd day of the preparation for the total consecration to Jesus through Mary, we'll look at the apparition of Our Lady to the children on September the 13th, 1917. On September the 13th, as many as 30,000 people gathered at the Cova da Iria. While waiting for noon to arrive, Lucia led the rosary for the crowd. At noon, a certain phenomenon announced the arrival of Our Lady. The sky was clear, not a single cloud was in sight. Some describe seeing a luminous globe traveling from the east to the west and soaring slowly across the sky. Some of the pilgrims cried out saying, there she is coming. Suddenly the globe with its extraordinary light disappeared from view and the sky darkened. The light of the sun grew dim and the atmosphere became a pale yellow color. The children remained kneeling. The crowd, in awe, watched as Lucia spoke to Our Lady, asking, What do you want of me? Our Lady said, Continue to pray the rosary in order to obtain the end of the war. In October, Our Lord will come, as well as Our Lady of Sorrows and Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and St. Joseph will appear with the child Jesus in order to bless the world. God is satisfied with your sacrifices, but he does not want you to sleep with the rope. Wear it only during the day. And what, what that's referring to is the children had found a coarse rope uh, that was very uncomfortable, and they would wear it around their waists hidden during the day and also at night as a penance to offer to God. So. Our Lady says, God is satisfied with your sacrifices, but he does not want you to sleep with the rope. Wear it only during the day. Lucia said, there is a little girl here who is a deaf mute. Would not your grace wish to cure her? Our Lady replied that a year from now, the girl would be better. Lucia then explained gently to Our Lady that she had many other requests, some for conversions, others for a cure. Our Lady said, I shall cure some of them, but others no, because our Lord does not have confidence in them. The people would indeed like to have a chapel here, said Lucia. Our Lady replied, with half of the money received so far, they should make litters and carry them on the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. The other half can be used to build the chapel. Then Our Lady paused and said, in October, I will perform the miracle so that all may believe. The children then watched as Our Lady ascended toward the east and disappeared. The crowd saw the luminous globe do the same. What does Our Lady wish to teach us today in this second to last day of preparation? The point I want to highlight is how much Our Lady is is willing to give guidance even for seemingly um, very small material details. For example, uh, Lucia says the people want to have a chapel built here, and Our Lady says, with half the money received so far, make litters and carry them on the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. So carrying in procession um, for the Feast of Our Lady of Rosary, the uh, statue, carrying statues and so forth to honor Our Lady. The other half can be used to build the chapel. Then Our Lady paused and said, In October I will perform a miracle so that all may believe. So even in terms of giving uh, details in terms of how the money should be used for different things, and you remember last time she talked about even how the children should dress and how many children should be carrying which litter. And that's a sign of how much Our Lady wants to be so involved in the details of our everyday lives and also how Lucia doesn't hesitate to speak with full confidence, even though she's aware of the, um, very impressed by Our Lady come down from heaven, and yet she has the simplicity of a child to, to speak about anything 
that may be on her heart or her mind with Our Lady. And that's a reminder of how much Our Lady wants to be involved in every detail of our life and the simplicity she wants us to have with her. St. Louis de Mumford says the heart of the devotion, what we're about to do, and then how we should try to live every day, is to try to do everything with Mary, in Mary, for Mary, and by Mary. With Mary means trying to be aware of her presence, to remember her presence all throughout our day. So right now as I'm speaking to you, Our Lady is right here, thankfully, interceding for you and hopefully obtaining many graces for you. And so thinking of her all throughout our day, even when you're, when you're cleaning the kitchen or playing a game or anything that you're doing, turning in for the night, waking up in the morning, being aware that Our Lady is fully alive by your side and wanting to be involved in every detail of your life. And so asking her for guidance, asking her for um, strength. And that is the point of doing everything by Mary. So dependent not on our own abilities, but on the grace of Jesus Christ that comes to us through the hands of Our Lady. And so not only being aware of her, but here Lucia is asking for miraculous cures, and we certainly can ask for those, but even for the strength to do anything, even very simple things during our day, the more we have the humility to not depend on ourselves, but on the grace of Christ that comes through Mary. So saying, look, I want to depend on the graces you can obtain from God not even what I could obtain by my own prayers from God. For Mary means trying to make her happy in everything that we do. And it's amazing how much when we look to our Heavenly Mother and try to make her happy, we do a much better job of making Jesus himself happy. So that's with Mary, for Mary, and by Mary. The fourth one, in Mary, is more mysterious. It seems to refer to a much more mystical uh, mystical union of, of living in Mary mystically. And so I won't even try, perhaps, because I haven't experienced that yet myself. But St. Louis de Mumford talks about living in Mary mystically, which certainly must be true. And so may the, the simplicity of Our Lady in Lucia, in the interaction we see here, help us to have that same simplicity with our Heavenly Mother already today as we prepare for the consecration in just two days' time. So let's pray now the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer us. Amen.